Village Clerk of Vernon Hills, and uh, I'm calling the meeting to order. And um, why don't we take a roll call for a quorum? President Byrne? Trustee Hebda? Here. Trustee Cook? Here. Trustee Marquardt? Here. Trustee Schultz? Trustee Schwartz? Here. Trustee Williams? Okay, why don't we, um, is there a vote to name a president pro tem? I would ask that Trustee Tom Cook be pro tem. Second it. Roll call. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Trustee Schwartz? Aye. Trustee Williams? Aye. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Okay, we got a quorum. And then we'll do, do the uh, quorum for the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. Commissioner Morris? Here. Commissioner Blue? Commissioner Cot Cotton? Commissioner Hesner? Here. Commissioner Heidner? Here. Commissioner Gorod? Here. Okay, this is um, just committee of the whole. Just yeah, it's the committee of the whole. <coughs> if you want to uh, have the Chair usual Bush opening did. Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. And Everybody could please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Mike, you want to go ahead and explain then uh, the... <coughs> Okay, so this joint meeting, maybe either John, you or John. I'll, yeah. I'll defer to my colleague and okay. he can review our purpose here tonight. Yeah, thank you. Um, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to have a general discussion um, about the concept plan, but then also then talk very specifically about the architecture as it relates to the facade improvements, not only for the theater, but also for the other three entrances to look at the building materials related to that, that project and have a better understanding of, the, of that. Um, and then um, finally to talk about the comprehensive signage package that they're proposing, not only um, the perimeter but also the interior signage, um, the signage on the buildings and, and the like. Tonight we're not asking either the commission nor the committee to uh, vote on anything. Um, it is a discussion and the hope here is that you will give them direction that they will take into consideration and then begin uh, further refinement on their technical review uh, responses and drawings and then ultimately going on to the Planning and Zoning Commission um, for uh, zoning entitlements uh, and then working parallel with the engineering uh, division to work on the infrastructural uh, approvals. So uh, again, discussion. Um, specifically on the details of this project. Um, tonight you will not talk about, an, you know, I, I, forgive me, I, I don't mean to say it that way, but there will be no real direct um, presentation with regards to landscaping or civil, uh, the civil engineering aspects of it. Um, both are very straightforward um, and, and the like. Um, these two items tonight, architecture and signage, are probably the most complex of, of the things that we'll be dealing with um, as we go forward with this. So with that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then what's our vice preference? Just hear presentation first and then start asking some questions? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yours? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, this is, uh, my name is Hide Kashima, the Development Director for Westfield. I'd like to just introduce <clears throat> our uh, team real quick here. Uh, with us tonight, we have uh, our uh, Senior Vice President of the, uh, for Development in the Midwest and Northeast, uh, John Genovese, sitting over there. Um, also Vice President of Design, Michael Platt, standing next to me. Uh, our outside Counsel, Rob Gamreth from Corals and Brady, and our Civil Engineer, uh, Steve Cross from Cross Engineering. So thank you very much. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the um, Board and Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, again, thank you on behalf of Westfield for the opportunity to present tonight. Uh, before we start, I'd like to uh, thank the staff for all their help and guidance throughout this process, and uh, we continue to work together, so uh, that's very helpful. Um, what I'd like to do tonight is give you a real quick overview of what we plan to do. Um, we'll go through the presentation packet that you've all seen and uh, received, and then as we go through, I'm sure you'll have specific questions that you have, and then we'll be uh, able to address them. Michael here is our designer, so anything 
very specific to the architecture or the signage, we can certainly answer that tonight. So um, uh, I'll start off by saying um, we're really excited to be here in front of the village again uh, for our expansion project. I know it's been a while, uh, but we're really excited for this uh, rollout of uh, potentially a, um, <clears throat> for a cinema and some restaurant spaces, redoing the entries, um, and really working on the exterior signage um, and opportunities to really revamp some of the landscaping uh, around the mall. So um, I'm going to go through the plan here. So the first quadrant we're going to talk about is the northeast, as you'll see here. And that's where we're proposing, um, at the grade level, putting in about 19,000 square feet of restaurants and retail space. Um, as you can see in this layout here, R1 and R2 are really uh, intended for uh, sit-down restaurant spaces. And this will be cut up accordingly to whatever tenant we end up with. Uh, but what we're showing in here uh, is also a new mall entry down here. This will be a Westfield new mall entry into a common area, uh, a small fast casual restaurant in some interior retail space. Uh, you have an escalator right here that goes up and that will take you to our state of the art for, uh, 12 screen um, cinema complex and um, we're still negotiating our lease right now with the operator so I can't mention the name but um, their concept is uh, to go digital and uh, state-of-the-art uh, fit-outs and also uh, a concept of a bar uh, right in the corner. Um, where is the at? Having a bar up here. So, uh, and that bar will be open to patrons uh, as they can take drinks into the, uh, what they would like to propose is to take drinks into um, the theater, the each auditorium. Uh, going back just really quick to the site plan, um, I want to touch up on some of the common area stuff out here. You'll see what we're showing here is a uh, outdoor dining space. Uh, we think that's going to work really well uh, with the restaurants that we're, we're seeking. Uh, in fact, most of them will request that. Um, so we've anticipated that ahead of time and really created a nice outdoor dining experience here for our warmer months. Warmer months. And uh, to buffer that, a really nice landscaping buffer and really adding a lot of trees in front, uh, creating that nice little sidewalk. Um, we're also showing here a little drop-off zone. Uh, so there's a little curb cut there. And then as you go down here, uh, this will be a valet uh, operation here. So anyone uh, joining the restaurants could uh, valet park or if you're going to the movies. <clears throat> Here on the elevation, um, this is the cinema box above. We're showing a big curtain wall, all glass. And then uh, this is the rest of the auditoriums right here. Restaurant space below. You'll see a nice Westfield and mall entry uh, shown here. Uh, sign opportunities for the three restaurants or uh, three restaurant spaces that we're talking about. Um, just what I'd like to point out is this line here and below is really intended for the restaurant storefront. So um, we work with national tenants that have typical uh, what they like to do, use for their exterior. Uh, we work with them. You know, we'll obviously have a, a criteria that they'll have to use you know, first class material. Um, but what we're showing here is maybe just a, a suggestion or a type of what this exterior might look like, just so that it adds some flavor. But the intent is to have the restaurants be able to, to show their own characteristics here. Any questions so far as we're going through this? When you talk about restaurants and you talk about their exterior, um, are you saying that you have they have to be in compliance with your color board or are you saying that they're going to want to bring in some of their schematics for I what they want to do? I think we'll have a, a pretty broad uh, criteria that they must follow uh, as far as you know how big the sign can be or where the sign can be placed, uh, the materials that we'd like to see or at least the type. Um, and then 
um, to, they may come back and say, oh, what do you think about this? And, and usually that's how we kind of negotiate back and forth to a, to a point where it's both acceptable. Um, that's how we're typically used to dealing with uh, our restaurant spaces and our malls, especially in this case, in an exterior scenario, um, that's, that's how we typically. We My only red flag would be the concern that the, where you see some restaurants, like for example, we have Chili's with the big chili pepper and mm. you've got some other places, that would be my concern or red flag that we don't have that kind of facade on the front, certainly. Um, understand their color schematics, but I think some of the, the things that they do, like when you see Chuck E. Cheese's and the mouse and that kind of, <laughs> I don't think that I would be very supportive of going into something like that with restaurants. Okay. So we just ask for that. Is something to consider. Okay. Right, as long as the restaurants realize what our sign ordinances yeah. are and mm -hmm. what we're looking for and what we allow. Right. So that they're not all trying to come in for variances. Right. That we okay. probably won't get. And that's, I guess, we'll, we'll definitely work sure. to, um, I think, <coughs> We'll have to work through that. I mean, we just don't know who these tenants are. You don't be know, yet. right? You don't know so, what's going to be coming in. But. Um, I'm sure it'd be great if we get someone that everyone likes. Um, right. And then if it's something that's problematic, we'll certainly take it up with sure. the village. Okay. If you remember, with um, the Vernon Hills Town Center, what we did with signage was to approve rectangular spaces on the building facades because we didn't know who the tenants were. And what we did. Um, 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 was to work with the owner to make sure that the individual signage fit within the rectangular um, spaces that were approved, um, again, recommended by the commission and ultimately approved by the board. So one of the thoughts would be is to move forward with that. That eliminates or significantly lessens any kind of variation needs, but also allows us to move them forward in a more rapid manner um, than typically um, occurs. Can you, excuse me, can you describe how the addition of the theaters and the restaurants merge into the existing mall? Sure, absolutely. Let's go back to that plan. <clears throat> so right here is the northeast. Uh, you'll see this is the existing uh, building line of the mall. And the food court right here. Uh, in most of Westfield malls, you'll find the cinema uh, as close as possible to the food court. We think that's a great synergy. We think that the interaction there goes well. Um, so again, we, we picked this corner for, for that reason. Uh, and uh, existing food court, this is off the plan a little bit here, but you can come back down here. This is an existing corridor, and it's really just expanding that common area out. Uh, and of course, we're, you know, we're showing some nice uh, seating, interior seating uh, potentially for this restaurant space, um, so there's almost like a cafe, dining area, interior. So this is the current entrance there? Yeah. Yes. This right, is right where you see that C is the current set of outer doors for the theater, or sorry, for the existing shopping center, and that dashed line is the existing canopy that's there today. Okay. So we're, we're just tying into that existing concourse and just really extending it uh, about 80 or 100 feet. Now there looks like there's also a little, a small patch passage at the bottom of your drawing there. Is that going to the food court there? Or is that oh, this right here, um, we were thinking no, potentially no, this could. Down. <laughs> yeah, this. Oh, no, that's a well, back. While you're at it, go ahead. And that's a back of house corridor. I think you're addressing. He's, he's addressing. Oh, right, right here? There. Yeah. Uh, that's an existing yeah, back of house corridor right now. I think okay, there's a so restrooms are right here. Public access. No, Correct. no. Yeah. But, but while you're at it, explain that other. Sure. So this thought here is, again, if uh, it'd be really great for us to be able to put another restaurant in here. It's probably going to be a smaller, not a full dining, but I'm not uh, a full 5,000, 6,000 square foot restaurant, but something smaller. Um, and we'd love to give them an exterior entry um, and an opportunity to be seen from the exterior. So uh, this entrance here, was that we were contemplating that could be it. Uh, and of course, this dashed line here, it could be a little bit of a canopy that comes out. Uh, gives it covering, but also shows you, you know, because it's so tucked back in there, give it an you opportunity to, to be to get, seen. You had to work to get that. Yeah, so it, it's, exactly. <laughs> it's right where that letter I is. Yeah, to be able to place their signage to give their sighting a, fi a signage a fighting chance of being seen, uh, but still working within the the building envelope that you see there on the on the drawing. It's a challenged location. 
but this plaza area is nice, you know, it's a nice open area that were created. Helps Sears out with their entry. Um, so I think, yeah, it could be nicely activated, um, really energizing that area. Well, that plaza, excuse me, that plaza goes kind of deep in there. And it seems uh, that the, 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 the way that penetrates the, the facade or the new facade, um, it, it poses a few, a few more problems. You know, that one, it seems like uh, that needs to somehow be brought forward. Well, and, and granted, the, the space that it's creating is not as marketable a space, okay? There's, there's issues with that space. But um, it seems as though that that's a little deep in there. What, what, we're trying to, what we're trying to do here is, this is a Sears property line that comes right here, right off this, this angle here. So what we were trying to do was not have to encroach um, their, their property. Uh, although we have a reciprocal easement agreement, we'd like to uh, avoid any sort of land purchase, um, that scenario. So uh, we try to keep that intact and try to work out some sort of, you know, at, at the minimum here would be some sort of easement that we can put up a little canopy and um, an entry. So that, that's sort of what drove that. Yeah, that, that thinking and design there. The building footprint, you've very clearly identified, I think one of the areas that is probably the least successful on the, on the plan, uh, but it does, you can see it very much marries up to that existing property line. And uh, believe me, it's not our first choice to do that by any means, but, but the challenges of doing something different are, are few and, and many. Actually, well, sorry, you've had to many. work, you know, you've had to work with Sears or with take into account Sears in this in this particular right. circumstance, but you also are taking into account a lot of other things. So maybe that is something that you can think about a little bit harder as far as uh, utilizing that space. Right, and then and just to give you some background on what our thought process of this being a restaurant is, is, is again, um, as you're coming down this corner, uh, it is a corridor that you have to go back here into this new area. We really wanted to draw attention to that area, and, and a, what we were envisioning was a nice little uh, fast casual restaurant that you can almost have like a spill out ceiling, uh, seating area, and activity, and as you're walking down the main concourse, you see that activity and you're like inviting, you're, you're invited to go around that corner and, and driven by that, and, and of course we wanna use a restaurant as a use, uh, but they were, most restaurants that we've experienced want some sort of exterior <coughs> presence. And that's where we were trying to create that opportunity uh, to help us out in that corner. Because that transition is going to be very critical for us to, for the success of this new addition here. Okay. I got a couple comments on the exterior, if I could uh, sure. discuss those. Now, this mall overall has it's, it has large expanses of just flat surface, and it looks like you're trying to create some kind of relief on here, at least um, bring out a little bit more elegance in, in material, curtain wall, et cetera. Um, on, on your lower left-hand quadrant of that board, is, are the, is that white material, is that a neoperi, is it right there? Th th that one, the white one. Here. Yeah. What is that? That's a glass. It's a, it's a back painted glass. Okay. So is that back painted glass, um, is, is that what the, I don't, I don't know how to show you. I can actually tell you right where that, where that's. Is that, is that right there? It, no, it's actually around the entrance. This is kind of a board, this piece of it's intended to show the entries. I'm not sure if this is actually there. There we go. Um, this is uh, the, the palette that we'll, we're trying to show in the entries. We're actually trying to create kind of a little bit of a beacon or a lantern at the entries to kind of really help them make, uh, give them sort of an identifiable presence. And really what this is, the, those entries will be made of a combination of these three materials. Uh, so you get a bit of a, a frit pattern, a back painted glass, a clear glass, and we get this kind of glowing lantern kind of beacon element. Up on this element are really two different uh, types of EFIS or a three coat plaster. Uh, we'll play with that with a series of architectural reveals to dress it up. 
Uh, we don't want to see any large expanses of, of, uh, of simply of an EFIS or a plaster, uh, but we feel like uh, we know that it's a very viable material up at that level, level on the cinema box uh, and really kind of uh, really focus our attention on really dialing up that pedestrian level, that, that scale of the restaurants and, the, and, the, and around the dining experience. And then above uh, a certain datum point here, we're showing about 23 feet. I think this is about 28 feet. Uh, so above that kind of datum point, around the cinema box, we'd go to, uh, again, an EFIS or a three-coat plaster, two colors, architectural reveals, uh, I think kind of dress it up and actually make it look a, a pretty sophisticated ex experience. One thing that I'm very mindful of is trying not to create a, and I'll use my words, not Hide's words, but kind of a garish theater box that sometimes you see, you know, lots of crazy colors and crazy patterns. We, we definitely want to go for a little more sophisticated presence here, and I think that's really what we're trying to achieve with what you see on the page. Well, you're going to definitely have some reflections, you know, going on with with this area over here, with your with your back painted glass, which is which is very nice. I mean, it, it adds it adds some it, it will glow, you mm -hmm. know. It adds some of that um, nighttime ex excellent nighttime um, right. appearance. But the the question is on on this area over here. Um, it, obviously, you want it to be a backdrop. What kind of reveals are you looking at? You know, you're showing fairly significant horizontal um, elements there. Are you talking about a different material than the EFIS? Are you, are you looking at metal or aluminum to we'll, sit in there? We'll actually do a little aluminum reveal, and then uh, in, in between we'll able, be able to change the color. So what you see on that PL2 is the little darker color to kind of create a band, uh, but separating the two different colors will be an aluminum reveal. So effectively you'll have the PL1, an aluminum channel, about a, you know, kind of a one-inch relief, and then a, a change in color into that PL2 another aluminum channel and back to PL1. So we kind of get a bit of a rhythm there, do it right, do it the right way again, and, and, but again, stay with a very sophisticated presence, but really kind of, I think, I think dial it up and, and really give it a, a little bit of presence on its own, even though, and you're right, it is intended to be kind of a little bit more of a backdrop. And is that, are you gonna have any theatrical lighting on the face of it? Mm -hmm. Uh, we will have uh, certainly lighting that surrounds the, uh, the the media panel there, and I, I would love to get some li uh, up lighting on here to give a little bit of a glow, kind of a gradient, uh, kind of a gradient illumination. But as far as spotlights and things like that, hadn't really considered it. Um, Suggestion for the for the architectural lighting, if if you're looking at horizontal um, lighting, uh, that you don't need to carry it all the way across anything. You know, smaller amounts of it can do great great things absolutely and and that would allow also that you know you'd have your highlights of these elements at night and then you'd have your highlights of these elements at night you've obviously created a, a fairly neutral palette so that the whoever's coming in there for the for the restaurants has every opportunity to to bring forward some kind of character that they're uh, liking except that when when they come here they're going to you know they're going to really need to show up with a some level of sophistication on, on what that's going to be because otherwise it, it's not going to fit you know, absolutely that, true so so please caution them you know honestly we're you're going to be our, our greatest partner was when they come with mice and chilies and things like that we'll we'll uh, we'll make sure that uh, <laughs> while we would love that we'll make sure we'll they they know that we'll never get that through so uh, we'll we'll be we'll be good friends on that front I uh, just want to point out something here um, on the rendering. We are proposing two panels right here. These are 14 by 48 static signs that we're proposing at this point uh, for uh, advertising purposes. We can touch upon that a little bit later on the overall advertising um, uh, concept. But that's those are two panels that we are proposing, uh, not LED and some uplit probably. Any questions on that northeast corner? Any more questions? All right, we'll move along. So, he did, let me ask one question on that static panel. Yep. How do you change the the sign that's in there? That's uh, you know typically these these deals will go on you know either a week or you can go by five weeks typically. Mm -hmm. um, so, standard I would guess is about a month. Okay. Uh, and then there it's like on a ratchet system, mm -hmm. and the. Uh, the material, I don't know what the technical term is, but vinyl, the center vinyl, yeah. yeah. Is it a big roller that rolls across? 
It, it's not. It's an individual panel, and what we've done is they're actually in a little bit of a sign box. They've got a little bit of dimension to them. They're about uh, about a foot deep, mm -hmm. and what that allows them to do is to put ratchets all the way around the full perimeter, uh, so we don't get any rippling or anything. You can actually go through, and they're on about every kind of couple of feet or so. There's a grommet, and they're just ratcheted down all the way around the full perimeter. You get a nice taut. Uh, I think a very classy, very clean appearance. No ripples, no splaying. Uh, just a, I think a, a very clean presentation. So the, the 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 plan that you have, the elevations that you have here, identify H2 and H3 as as uh, media panels in them. So we should change these to static panels. Uh, yeah. So I, I I guess media panel is our terminology for for a static panel. We would call it an LED panel, but we're, we're certainly happy to to change it to a vernacular that is you know that makes the I just want to make sure it's clear. Yes. So, okay. what, what's the thickness of uh, the static panel that you're referencing? It's about a, about 12 inches. Oh, the panel itself oh. is just a canvas or a vinyl. You know, it's just it's a, a material. Uh, it's just really the structure and then the, the, the frame that it actually gets wrapped around uh, that gives it a little bit of dimension of about a foot. You, you mean you're referencing mm -hmm. the actual sign material? Mm -hmm. Are you referencing what I'm seeing in the picture, which is depicted as a light area, I think it is. What's the skin in the upper right-hand corner there of your it, sample board? It's a vinyl. Vinyl? Yes. Like a PVC-coated vinyl or PVC-coated canvas. So it's got a, it's and got how, a, much, how many square feet of this facade will be vinyl? Just, just where the media panel is. So just that piece right there, it's about 670 square feet. So I need, but on either side of it, the trip. On, on either side of it is the the EFIS, the three coat plaster and EFIS blend with the aluminum panels that I, I was discussing previously. Okay. What about the and ends? Point, point the EFIS up. The, what the material? The, what, the, no, is it actually oh, here. sample board? These, these two materials. So the two colors you see reflected in this facade are these two colors right here, and it is a kind of a sand finish, so it's a very smooth finish. Uh, and then the media panel we we're just discussing is clearly you know that that space in the middle. It's a sign box basically. It's about a foot wide, uh, in depth deep, and then just by 1448, and it's got a ratchet system inside. So every month or so we come in, we roll out this canvas. It's got, it's got grommets. We've got, it's got hooks on it, and everyone ratchets it up to each corner, and then it just tightens up. And yeah, I understand that part. I'm just more concerned about the the building materials. Okay, that's the if it's these two pan these two elements are here. It's a, a plaster stucco kind of stucco finish. And what's the thickness of that? Uh, it's typically placed on a two inch rigid insulation and then it has a th either the three coat plaster finish or a integral color EFIS finish to get that. So that, that material will end up being two, probably two and a quarter inches thick. Uh, Is there somewhere where we can go and see that? That exists here in the Chicago area. I, I'm I'm sure it exists all over. We'll, we, well, we, we got it in town. Just, I, yeah. I'm just you saying. See it. If you use this at like okay. Old Orchard. Yes, we have. This is the same system that the Old Do you Orchard. Have any Cinema pictures models. of that or uh, yeah. of the sign? We're talking about sign right now. No, the the well, I'm talking about the oh, building material. The, box. the oh, sign so is you, you know okay. That's okay. kind of the sign. Signs a sign. Uh, this is exactly. I don't I don't have a I don't think we have a picture with us tonight. We'll happily include that in our next go around or. or you send like that around. You don't really plan on use, using any masonry at all? Uh, not on that cinema box, not up at that above the, the 20 plus or minus foot level. Below that level, around the restaurants and that pedestrian area, absolutely. There'll be masonry, uh, stone, tile. You know, I, I would hope for natural stone, uh, wood, reclaimed wood. We'll get, we'll get into some, some pretty sophisticated, very nice materials at that level. But once we get above uh, that 20 or 22 foot dimension, we would go okay, up to the, an EFIS. Yeah, but do you have those materials here tonight? What, the, the masonry, the stone? We don't have that because I think, as, as Hide mentioned earlier, that will be part of what the tenant finishes. And when the tenant comes in with their designs and their materiality, then you'll, you will see exactly what, what they're proposing. Uh, for what we have here on the board, we're just putting something in for a little context. Uh, but that's you know what we have right now. Without knowing the tenants that are going in there, it's difficult for us to to really speak to precisely what those materials will be. So that the, what 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 I'm yeah. hearing is yeah. that <clears throat> you're not necessarily going to be able to move forward with anything until you're fully you're you have fully occupied or you have tenants signed up for these spaces. We will we will we would certainly start and. The hope is that we will have a tenant before 
uh, the theater opens up. But what are you going to do in the meantime? That'll be that'll be shell space. We'll, we'll have it fitted out to shell space and the barricade that wraps around it. In the so the exterior is going to look like what? Well, let's hope at grand opening it looks like this or even better. Uh, but the reality of it is, is we've got about 10 months of construction that we need to do before we'd even turn over that space to a tenant for them to come in and do their tenant improvements. Uh, so we have a lot of legwork to do, which is why we're here today in front of you to try and get that process started so that ultimately we can continue our leasing efforts on that proper, on, on those two spaces while we're running in parallel course with our construction and getting our entitlements and be able to move forward and bring these things together at one time. So the worst case scenario is a, gra a barricade with we have some graphics that we typically put up on the barricades. We ask our tenants to do that. If you go to Old Orchard right now, North Face has a, a beautiful barricade with graphics on it, and it really livens that area, and you know, you don't, you don't see the big plywood just sitting there. So um, we are aware we're not gonna open that up, this big project with blank plywood out there, so. So you, you've used the, all these materials at Old Orchard? Absolutely. There's, you know, there are. It, so it's every major entrance going in? Every major entrance will get this treatment here, which is, I think, what we'll see as we further, you know, walk our way through no, the presentation. I mean, no, I mean, did you do entrances with this same material at Old, old Orchard? At, at, given the Old Orchard's outdoor nature, we don't really have entrances like that. We don't have okay. kind of common mall entries. We, you know, so it's, it's a bit of an apples to oranges comparison, but, okay. but we would certainly do something commensurate with this at Old Orchard if, if we had that opportunity. How many square feet of space there did you, you know, use this same kind of uh, exterior elevation? Uh, in terms of the cinema box, uh, the cinema box there is actually a 13 screen, so I'm gonna say it's roughly the same. It may even be more, because it's actually a, a much bigger box than what we're showing here, so I think here we're at just around about 50, 4,000 square feet? They're, they're have, they have two, two theater complexes at Old Orchard. It's about 100,000 square feet combined, and that's mostly EFIS exterior. Um, we have other materials that we've used, um, or LL Bean has a little bit more of a rustic, uh, more outdoor look. Um, They've got the metal panel on there. The, yeah, metal panel, hardy board, you know. Yeah. Um, Crate and Barrel has a different, totally different look. Um, so we have, you, I think Old Orchard would be a good palette of a lot of materials being used, uh, and certainly nothing here is out of the ordinary or right. uh, exclusive. Well, you know, maybe, you know, not obviously not tonight. Maybe you can, you know, share something with staff and they can distribute so, it to us. I sure, mean, sure. obviously people sitting up here can take a ride and look at it too. Oh, we're happy Somebody to hasn't already, I don't know. We, have a, we had a new tenant called Henry Bendel that came up and they did all glass. I mean, obviously, it's a smaller storefront, but yeah. um, and you know, we, we welcome all that the, the different materiality yeah. that. And we work. We have a tenant coordination group that really kind of uh, you know we, we set forth what we call a tenant criteria. So we don't get uh, the, the 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 mice and the chilies and that kind of stuff and the and the materials that come along with that. So we really try and drive a vision, which is what we're trying to do here. And we honestly hope that our tenants come in and see what we're trying to do and take it up another notch from there. Uh, but we work hand in hand with them to really ensure a result that I think we're all very happy with. Because I mean, uh, you, I'm sure you gentlemen, you know, understand completely. We're going to be kind of your development partner here, right? Right. Absolutely. For those potentially watching at home. Sure. Absolutely. You know, we're kind of building the theater for you, right? Sounds good. No, no, don't say sound good. He day can speak to that. Yes. We are partners. Plus the gentleman from New Jersey back there. <laughs> How you doing? All right. <laughs> you know, but, okay. Go ahead. I'm gonna continue walking through the presentation. Yeah. Which way am I going? Is there gonna be any signage about um, what the theaters are playing or no? Because I don't see that anywhere. No, we're actually, um, we, we don't have that. There was a time when theaters wanted to advertise on their pylon. They put every, you know, every, every theater, every, sorry, every screen that what was showing. Um, that really, most operators, if not all, I can't even think of one that still uses that, that, that approach today. Um, they typically find it more laborious than helpful. And 
Uh, everyone's got their phones for checking what's playing at Old Orchard now, and really that's taken over for, for all that kind of stuff. At, uh, the Regal at Old Orchard has told us that they'd like to just clad their, they used to have a marquee like that, and then just said, we'd like to just name it Regal and take away all that signage. So um, you did bring up a point that I forgot to mention here. Um, we are showing, I think in this rendering here, and in an elevation we did show, uh, this behind this curtain wall here, there's a blank wall that uh, the cinema operator that we're dealing with right now would like the opportunity to put a poster up there, uh, a giant poster of the movie that one of the movie that they're either showing or that is coming soon. Um, so the idea was either in this black this blank wall back here, or um, if you can imagine on some of the buses now they have those wraps. It's a kind of a see-through, it's transparent, it's a, like a sticky back material. Uh, they'd like to put that on the glass potentially up here. So that's something that um, has surfaced in our negotiations and uh, we wanted to reflect that here and have that discussion as well, so. It, it's actually a, it's a, like a perforated material. It's not that dissimilar to what you see around here with a frit. Just on the inside looking out, you just see a, a, a blank, whether it be white or a dark color. It almost looks like a screen. And from the outside, you actually read an image. Uh, but it would effectively function a bit like a frit on that, on that so curtain wall. So your glass would have to be butt glazed or in that application without, because you're showing some relief on your. Yeah, no, we, what the, the intention here is we would run uh, kind of a, a, a horizontal mullion cap. So it would really kind of help emphasize that horizontality of it. And then the, the, it would be a butt glazed condition in the, in the vertical joint. Uh, but still with a mullion backing, again, not that dissimilar to what you see here, just without the pressure cap on the exterior. But your sticky back signage then would have to be segmented? Correct. Yes. Exactly correct. We had that, we did that, we had that condition at Old Orchard in a parking garage uh, is a glass staircase that comes down and that's where segmented, they cut it off and apply it. It's a longer process, but it certainly can be done. And when it's executed correctly, it's, it's very nice. So do you actually cut out the dimension of that signage? You do. You do. You have a spec sheet, and we have exactly what size that needs to be. They do a full bleed. They'll actually come and install it, and they'll come with a razor blade and trim it so it's perfect. You actually print, print it a little bit larger than, you, than is required and come back and trim it and go panel to panel. Truthfully, the things come out segmented anyway. All it does is save them from having to seam something together because they really got kind of a built-in break in that mullion cap. And honestly, it actually goes up a little bit easier because I don't really have to worry about getting text to line up as quite as well. And, you know, it's separated by a three-inch mullion. Okay, moving along. As I mentioned to you earlier, we're, we are touching all the uh, other three entries. Uh, we didn't want just the Northeast entry to get all the new treatment. Um, so working, uh, we are working with a tenant right now um, that's a restaurant slash uh, entertainment gaming uh, company <clears throat> that would like to do, uh, get an entry on the lower level and then escalator up to about 30,000 square feet above. Uh, and what we're trying to do here is uh, allow for exterior signage. Um, really, one of the ways that we think um, how to energize an entrance is to have these outward retail uh, concepts. Um, so on one side, uh, we're envisioning maybe a burger place, one of the gourmet burger places that are so popular now. Uh, love to have that. And then, again, this new tenant here uh, where there's a uh, first level entry, go up, and it's a much expansive space. Um, and as Michael mentioned earlier, it's part of that entry. We're going to put this big uh, lantern or light box. Um, obviously, do a lot of landscaping upgrade, um, creating a nice plaza. Uh, we do have that canopy, really massive um, canopy structure right now out here. Uh, that blocks all sort of sight lines to any sort of exterior retail that we're contemplating. So we wanted to take that back uh, and re really create a new mall entry here. So um, let me just go down to a rendering here. As you can see, uh, tenant signage. Uh, this is right now a concept. Um, we'd love to see them uh, punch through that, that big wall and create almost a sort of a entry, or not an entry, but a, a nice window to be able to allow light in that upper level space. 
because they will take that whole space. Um, and then down here, cladding, some of that, um, we have a mechanical room right there. I think it's all just plain brick right now. Uh, adding some sort of nice cladding to it and a signage opportunity here. Again, very similar to what we discussed earlier on the theater side, an opportunity to do advertisement here uh, or just Westfield um, banner opportunity. Outdoor seating during the warmer months and uh, new lighting, landscaping. Can you showing glass in the facade? Yes, we are. Same, uh, uh, all new entry doors, and then the same kind of light box lantern up above, giving that kind of two-story read, really help to kind of bring that scale down. I think kind of dress it up a little bit. Goal for all this, and you're going to hear the same story at all at the other two entrances that we haven't discussed, this one and, and two more, really just want to activate these entries, really create nice people spaces. Uh, Hide mentioned kind of flanking entries with restaurant, lot, you know, uh, whether fast casual sit down, outward facing retailers, really just kind of create a vibrance and, a, and I think it makes a nicer space for people to come in. Right now you walk into a little small door and an otherwise big uh, unadorned facade. It's not a very inviting, inviting way to kind of enter into a shopping center. Uh, Westfield it feels very strongly that your experience at the shopping center starts the moment you get on the property. Uh, so that's why we'll talk about wayfinding in a minute, really help with that experience, help with the parking experience, give people a beacon, something to see is after they park, make it to the shopping center, uh, really give them a comfortable space in which to be and arrive, come into the shopping center, or world-class retail, uh, you know, kind of all the way through. So that really, that experience starts all the way from the curb line in. And uh, I think really at this entry experience is something we've not done well at the shopping center. And I think what you're seeing on the, the, uh, the pages here is that uh, we're really trying to dial that up. Yeah. Could you, um, I, th I believe this is the only entrance that's used by buses. <clears throat> Could you address how this redesign helps that kind of usage? Uh, we'll certainly address, uh, you know, we could uh, improve that drop-off area, uh, allow that bus to stop by. Um, I believe it's a PACE bus here, and uh, certainly we've worked with PACE before, um, and so we can coordinate with them as to uh, making this a multimodal uh, entrance. And that's something that we can easily work with PACE, and, you know, whether it's little benches. The only thing I can think would complain about if I was a bus rider and had a wait, was waiting for my bus is that if it was inclement weather, now you've taken away my shelter that used to be there. Yeah. Is a fair point? We still have a little bit of an overhang here for some protection, uh, entry vestibule possibility, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly let's we will we'll address that issue too. Um, some sort of coverage, maybe it's on this side. Yeah. I, I think the, the tables that are there makes it probably a little nicer experience when the weather's not bad, but you're right. I think uh, for those moments when you're waiting for a bus in the rain or in, in some inclement weather, uh, I think we can probably approve on that. Thank you for that comment. Can I ask a question to follow up on that? All of the canopies other than one on the back end of the mall, which is probably the least accessible entry you could find, has got this reduced canopy on it. And at least speaking, maybe too personally, I'm the one when it's raining or snowing is sent to get the car. Uh, <laughs> we're putting aside bus riders, which is a much smaller population than people that shop. Where do people that are getting picked up, dropped off without having to go through the weather? And I appreciate that we wanted to have these spaces when the weather's nice. But regrettably in Chicago, we have perhaps even more days when the weather's not so nice. So how does that get accomplished? Because I noticed there's, with these new spaces, there's no cutouts where you can pull like kind of out of the lane of traffic. You know, you've got you know, a large plaza, you've got to get across in the rain or the snow or whatever. How is that being addressed? Uh, well, a, a great question. Uh, you know, I think you're right, we brought it up with the buses here. Um, I think one, one of the things we're actually trying to do is really give some of the, ent a lot of the entries a, a little bit of their own character and their own flair. Um, flair is maybe not the right word, but again, a bit, a bit of character. Um, one of the things we've had to do or are contemplating doing is removing those canopies that you're just addressing to improve some sight lines and some visibility in there that really helps the leasing and the tenancy, which we think will create a little more vibrant, uh, a vibrant entry experience. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that's the, the, the trade-off that we're looking at there. 
Um, as far as pull-offs, I think if we go to the next entry, we do actually do have a pull-off. We have a, we had a sort of two opportunities for a sort of a pull-off and a pickup, or whether it be valet on one side or pickup on the northeast that we just talked about with the with the theater. On the southeast, we're looking at uh, another opportunity in there for a leasing restaurant. Uh, we have pulled a, car, a curb cut over in that area, and then. Those areas, and, and you pointed out the, the what we think is probably the most challenged entry, and it sounds like you agree on the northwest. That's the area where <clears throat> um, we've tried to give that its character, and that became kind of a porte crochet. So not only have we given the chance for the consumer to get to the curb line uh, with a, with covered canopy, we've actually given them a chance for the car to actually pull through there, and you can actually get from the shopping center right into your automobile without having any inter, uh, any interaction with inclement weather. So well, and in that environment, I think that's the place where we we would send. People. You had a similar style cut out up by the where the restaurants were Correct. for the valet parking. Then. We do. Is is there any keeping anything keeping you from putting some sort of a cutout at at basically every entrance because th it, that would get cars that are picking up and dropping off out of the traffic lane. I, I think maybe we need to take a look at that here. Uh, you know, we, you can see where we've got a little bit of a curb cut there for getting in and out of the out of the loading dock to kind of help with some turning radiuses. We can certainly take a look at how we replan some of that and and, and improve this entry. I think this is the one entry actually where we don't have that. Yeah, that's uh, what present. The other ones I noticed. The, the, the other ones we the do. Northwest, you had the the yeah. portico and a, and a and a way to pull out of the lane of. of, of that's right. Traffic. I think it's a good comment, and I th we'll yep. definitely address that here because I think we can implement that. So I think in in sort of a summary, I think we've tried to make most of the entries better, but probably in different ways, but to really address that inclement weather issue, that northwest corner, I think we've really dialed that one up to the point where anyone can get dropped off, picked up, no. shopping center to car door, no inclement weather issues whatsoever, and really made that, I think, a pretty nice arrival and departure sequence. Because even in looking at the southwest one, you've got a cutout in there. Right. I mean, you had it in all, three out of four entrances have it, and this is the only one that, this one actually bumps out a little. And if there was a way we could throw in some kind of a cutout. Yeah, sure. I, Absolutely. I, looking at the plan now, I think that uh, we, can, we can certainly accommodate that. It's a very good suggestion. We'll do that. Okay. Uh, we're looking at the southwest entry now. Uh, again, uh, we're lucky enough to have some interest uh, by a restaurant right now, and also undergoing a lease negotiations. Um, this is taking over the former Ruby Tuesday space, uh, and really uh, they're taking a little bit more space interior. We, we had to re reconfigure limited, um, but uh, nothing is using the same exact building footprint. Uh, we are showing here an opportunity to do an outdoor patio, which they've requested. Uh, and it seems like every restaurant that we deal with now is asking for these outdoor patios. So um, I think we show it in every possibility. Um, again, similar, very same treatment entry as the, the one we just talked about. Um, here we are doing, we are showing another uh, media panel or static sign panel uh, opportunity. And um, as we mentioned earlier, the drop-off area we're talking about here, uh, this does show it. Um, and certainly, let's go to the rendering. There you go. So again, benches, a little bit outdoor lighting. Yeah, and again, I think, like we mentioned earlier, you're going to see a very similar treatment as we walk around the shopping center, but uh, really trying to create a sense of ambiance, a sense of character, uh, make these really inviting entries. Um, you know, there is, uh, you know, sort of, you can see the, the existing image there in the lower left. Uh, they're very dark. They're sort of, they're very uninviting. They don't say, I, I don't think they say anything really positive. Uh, and I think we're really trying to address that uh, with what you see there in the upper right and some contextual images uh, along the bottom and then a couple of other views uh, on the upper left. Uh, but really trying to work with a very consistent palette. Uh, that tells the shopper here what you know what entry is. I think at nighttime they, they will really have a nice glow, as you see on some of the imagery down below. Um, by no means, uh, you know, you're not going to do surgery or read a book underneath them, but but a nice little glow, a little lantern that I think will really become this beacon and this uh, a really driving force for bringing people into the shopping center. Static sign or LED? This one here. Uh, static. Static. Is is that EFIS behind that static sign there? Yes, it is. So that EFIS goes. <laughs> All the way down. That EFIS is on a, is backed on what we call an AAC panel. So instead of using the rigid insulation that we do, uh, uh, you know, where it's out of uh, sort of 
uh, what I would consider the danger zone at the, sort of the pedestrian level, we put on what's called an AAC panel. It's an aerated autoclaved concrete, so it's a very lightweight concrete. Work goes up in a very similar panel size, or sorry, it's a, uh, a very similar panel thickness. The panels themselves are about two feet by four feet, and they're about two to three inches thick. Uh, we are able to apply them in a similar way that you would do the rigid insulation, but they're much more durable. Uh, they're much heavier than the EFIS, than, the, than the, the rigid insulation, but much more durable. Uh, and that's what we would do at anywhere where there's a risk of uh, sort of any damage or you know, where you're uh, up against hands and people and feet and things of those nature that, uh, and snow plows and shovels and things that really uh, conflict with a typical installation of an EFIS or stucco product. Do you guys have any, uh, are you going to do any foundation work at all? We will have to do some, uh, a little bit of reconfiguration on a couple of these entries, but it's, but it is minimal. On, and, on everything you're doing? Uh, on the three entries that we're talking about, obviously a tremendous amount of foundation work in the northeast corner where we're doing the, the theater. What are these pictures on the bottom? Uh, they're just contextual images, so uh, working obviously on the left is the existing image. Uh, the next one over gives you the idea of it's kind of back, back painted glass, a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of the glass treatment we're, we're thinking about. In the middle gives you the idea of kind of uh, how it glows at night. You get a kind of a little bit of a, a nice little glow beacon experience. Uh, next one over, second from the right, uh, just an integration of hardscape, landscape, kind of some built-in planners. Uh, how we can kind of, I think, really dial up that experience. And again, a similar little treatment on the right of a kind of a nice uh, two different colors of concrete, working in some banding there, really <laughs> kind of dialing up that experience and creating a, a nice entry arrival sequence. Is that, um, is, is that canopy tube steel, painted tube steel with glass on top? Yes, it is. Welded, ground smooth, uh, field finished, and then uh, glazing on the, on the upper surface. And is there any way that you can work any more of that back painted glass into your facade? Because that's 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 a hot material. That looks really, really nice. And if you could work some more of that into your facade, that would that would be excellent. Uh, we, we can certainly look at it. I will tell you, it's in, in addition to being an excellent and hot, it is, and someone had the magic word over here, it is incredibly expensive. But you're going to spend some um, money. The other thing I would want to say is that we, we, we want to try and use it in the right way so that it becomes kind of that, you know, if, if, if there's too much of it everywhere, it's almost it becomes too much of a good thing. We want to make sure that there's a, uh, a real language that really speaks entry for, for the consumer and not trying to conflict that message that we're trying to send. You can figure it out. <laughs> Fair enough. They're, 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 believe it or not, I don't have a square footage for you, but there's a significant amount of uh, this guy. I'll tell you right now, he wants me to he, he wants me to ease up on that a little bit. But uh, we'll take a look at it, and, and we'll definitely see what we can do. Anything that you can bring down to the pedestrian level with that? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I think it. You know, if the, the effect of it was intentionally trying to keep that kind of the vision glazing that does happen from zero up to about 12, or I think it actually might even be about 13 feet in there that's at that pedestrian level, and then we go to that kind of back painting glazing and you know fritted glass to get that. You know, we need something to glow. Glass doesn't glow at night, unfortunately, oh, right? So, nice. so we need yeah. So we need some of these. What what you really see at night is the uh, the frit is what actually gets illuminated so getting a lot of that at that upper level is really what will help give it that beacon or that that kind of glowing feel that lantern feel that we're going for and then down below that level obviously vision glass to help the consumer in and out of the shopping center does staff have any questions no <laughs> okay Okay, um, we'll move on to the next corner. <clears throat> this is the northwest corner. This is the one I think is actually kind of kind of exciting. It's um, you know it's something it's it's really going to be a new amenity for for Hawthorne. Uh, I think it does address uh, a lot of what I think are the inclement weather issues and the in and out. Um, this area we've uh, opted to just if you, actually if I'm sure everyone's familiar with the shopping center. This actually does have um, some wing space on either side of it. And actually, if we'd flip just the next page for a second. Uh, the lower left image, you can see the existing uh, structure. We're going to kind of take off the two outer bays and just leave that central bay. 
the two outer bays, actually, they actually narrow in plan, and we don't have enough width in there to get uh, to get a drive aisle through from turning radiuses. So we'll take that off, and then if we go back to the, well, actually, you can just leave it right there. Um, you'll see the image in the upper right. Now we've got this, I think, a great expression. We'll still work with the kind of lantern element here, um, and then be able to have cars pull through a kind of a double lane. You can pull up, wait, load, unload, uh, and I think it'll be a really nice amenity, and actually takes you in even closer to the uh, to the shopping side of the door. So. Um, the run from car to car to curb, or sorry, from doors to curb, is uh, you know pretty pretty minimal, and covered all the way. And I think it'll be a, a really nice way to drive a little bit of traffic back up in this corner, which I think uh, several of the members here have realized is is probably our most challenged entry. The uh, two left um, left-hand pictures are actually probably more reflective of what's there because I'm looking at the larger picture. It, there wouldn't be that wall to the left, correct? That would be the windows from the restaurant, right? Correct. Uh, although, is that a... No, those are well, the actual I, doors that are coming in there, I think, at the perspective. What you're actually seeing... No, you're right. There actually may be a little more glazing there than what we're showing. So you're saying glazing underneath that... I'm talking that, the, the, uh, to the left of the canopy. If I'm actually looking at your your picture right next to it, shows McCarthy's with the, right. the window... Correct. Which is, ...which is where their patio is. Correct. Yeah, so we just have to show. Uh, that's the area I'm talking about right I there. See. That's, that's, I area. See. that's yeah. actually going to be more windows and patio. I see. Yeah, I see. yeah, yeah. you're right. Down here, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's okay. not reflected in the model there. You're correct. Okay. We're not planning on closing that off and getting rid of that glazing. Okay. So. Uh, this is, Thank you. It is a box on kind, and those. I mean, and honestly, if you want to. Uh, I don't know what they were ever designed for. The, the structural loads that those things can handle, we can park uh, about three or four fire trucks up there. I mean, they are, are very big and very rigid. Um, you know, I think what we're trying to do is really trying to use that scale, but do so in a language like we're trying to do on the other three properties and really kind of adorn that existing structure in a way that's commensurate with the other three entries and this, this goal of having a beacon or a lantern effect. <clears throat> of the mall itself. Correct. And this is separate. This is pulled apart, but we'll do a similar treatment. It just will be open air. We'll still put some lights back there so it does glow. It has that glowing effect. We, again, we want to have a very similar treatment on, on all four entries of all four quadrants. Uh, it'll just be have to, we'll have to look at it in a slightly different way here, but again, with the goal being a, a similar result. This is a big challenge, this one. It is a challenge here, absolutely correct. This one is, this one's trouble. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, this one, it it has a lot of things working against it. it you're absolutely correct, and I, and I, and I think we're, we're certainly aware of that. I, I think we have a goal here. We've actually done some drawings to know that, you know, what, what I think we're showing you here on the page we can actually achieve, but you're right. We'll have to do, go at it from a slightly different perspective given its, uh, its different set of criteria and sort of base conditions that we're working from. So how do you make that lighter than it is? Uh, I think the skin treatment that we place on it on the on the exterior will actually effectively lighten that up. So we're we're actually wrapping that with this with a, a glazing product and the you know the kind of three kinds of glazing and aluminum that you see, which will give it a, immediately I think a new lighter appearance. Uh, and then with the illumination that we'll put on there at night, ultimately I'd, I'm not even sure you'll ever really feel that existing structure that's there today, which is very massive and in my opinion rather oppressive and, and massive. Yes. So, so there's so. Are you going to add, it looks like you're adding a little relief to it. There's some kind of relief going on it. It's not a flush box. Correct. Correct. It'll be the same kind of difference when glass. There's, a, there's an aluminum channel. So it's a, again, it's a combination of aluminum and the three kinds of glass you see there to kind of create a little bit of a relief. Because the one thing we don't want these things to do is go flat during the daytime when they're not internally illuminated. So the extrusion, the aluminum extrusions like you'd see on a, on a, on a storefront system gives you a little chance for some shade, shade and shadow. Uh, which would, which will help give that you know help with that flatness in a daytime read, and then at night I think you know it'll glow like the other images, and we'll have a I think a, pr a pretty compelling entry here. If you use I mean built these entry treatments anywhere else in the country, no. For the first, you're getting the best entries we have. You think? I think these are going to be spectacular entries, and honestly, I, I don't think there'll ever be something that we'll duplicate around, but I think there'll be something that ends up on image boards for other shopping centers for 
uh, hopefully quite some time to come. And I do mean that sincerely. I think they are actually going to be pretty fantastic and pretty spectacular entries. Any other questions? All right, uh, moving along uh, to signage. Um, Michael mentioned earlier about the shopping experience beginning at the, as you enter the mall. Um, in fact, at Westfield, we've done some studies. The shopping experience really starts at home, uh, and that's why we were investing a lot of money onto the Westfield website uh, and social media networks. So that experience, we realize, starts at home, the ease of trying to find our, look, uh, find our mall, uh, and then as you get in your car and you're driving uh, and you're nearing the center, uh, whether this is your hundredth time here or your first time, uh, wayfinding is critical. Um, and we recognize that uh, this center, the wayfinding system and the exterior has not been upgraded in a very long time. Um, so uh, as you go through the site, uh, letterings are faded, they're small, they're not lit. Um, so we really wanted to address that. Um, we're talking about 16 signs here, existing signs. Uh, we are not adding any new sign. Uh, everything is, uh, is there today. Uh, we're revamping it. Some are getting larger. Um, some stay relatively the same. We're just providing a new, fresher look. So um, just to give you an overview, the, um, just a couple different types of signs. We're, we're showing a huge monument sign right here on Town Line Road and then another one here off Milwaukee. Uh, both existing signs right now, a uh, lot shorter. Um, here we're proposing, and I'll, I'll go into detail here, but um, site directionals are all getting updated throughout the mall. And then we added something a little bit different here that I'll get into detail, the SP2s. And I think this is going to be a pretty creative way of uh, improving our wayfinding. So let's just go through this. As you can see, we've included photos of the existing uh, and the new signs. Uh, they're going to be backlit, um, larger, I think larger cat fight in most of the cases. Yes. As so we go through. Currently, I think none of the signs, the, those directional signs are lit. Is that correct? No. Correct. So this is a large monument sign that we're talking about right on, um, there are two of them. Um, they're 48 feet tall. 16 feet wide, 48. Now, are those the only two LEDs right now that you're talking about? Right. Those are the only two pylons. That, and right here, this sign right here, this 13 by 18, we are proposing this one to be an LED full motion. Um, we are requesting uh, off-premise advertisement uh, possibility. Is and that the one on Route 60 or Milwaukee? Uh, right now, both, both. yes. Uh, so two-phase, so these are both double-sided. Um, one off Milwaukee, one off Town Line. And um, we we'll obviously have all the anchor names here listed. Um, these will be illuminated lettering. This is the box, sign box here will be illuminated as well. Oh no, just a, um, just yeah. a lettering. Face illumination Face. on the Westfield and halo illumination on the Hawthorne. Right. Hours of operation of the LED screen. Were you thinking 24 seven or? Mm. Um, because especially the one on Milwaukee Avenue would right. be seen by residential. We can work, we definitely can work around that. Let's, I, don't know the power I don't think the intent is to be on all 24 hours. I'll have to check on that. That's a good question. I'll, I'll confirm with Because if it, it, that's the, probably the biggest concern with those is that they would you know, Absolutely. light up that apartment building yeah. that's a block north Absolutely. of there. That's a good point. Yeah. Certainly, if it's residential okay. facing. Uh, Bob. Okay. Bob Kenny. Just, just a quick question on uh, these, the larger ones you're talking about. And you say full motion. Is that a, I'm going to call it a static message that changes every period of time, or is that like more of a video that could move uh, like a TV screen? It could be, it could be both. Uh, either one. Um, we've seen some motion picture, the motion now videos uh, streaming through, um, and also some of them might just choose to be static for a while. Okay. You know, sometimes we can do public messages uh, if, that's, if that's necessary. Um, obviously, Amber Alerts or uh, any 
any sort of village event that's happening you can certainly um, incorporate that in there um, so that's would there be any sound or no uh, no we're not proposing sound on this how, how did you come up with those locations those two locations for those media centers? Well, I think really um, the, the, the locations were, uh, there, first of all, there are, there are existing signs uh, that we have, uh, the two monument signs, and they're by the major thoroughfares, and that's where we're going to get the most um, attraction from the media people that want to this, this area, the, the traffic is, is fairly static at rush hour and, and noontime, all along Route 60 and, and the 21. So I'm just I'm just wondering why you, you group them so close to the corner. Well, from the um, if you're for this one here, certainly if you're coming off the expressway um, and you're coming up the, the, the ramp, we wanted to make sure that it's tall enough, big enough that um, someone that's never been here can see. Um, the ramp. The ramp. Is not not ramp, but yeah. there's a grade change as you're coming up. As you're coming up Town Line Road, I think the grade here versus here is there's a, a, a bigger slope. Um, so we wanted to make sure that you're able to see the mall entry here. Um, and similarly, coming back from this this side, uh, that happens to be our first area where our property is, and uh, all these are not part of our. It's not part of the mall, so um, it's just a natural location for the two. So the the SP1 that's on Route 60. Is closer. Not a good idea to put it where the SP2 on Route 60 is. Because I think that dovetails in with what you're talking about, right? That's that it would, it seems to me that it would make a little more sense in terms of visibility of the mall to have it further from Milwaukee. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's... The, the challenge for us is that people coming up, as he was mentioning, if you're coming from the Edens uh, and, and work... I'm sorry, not from the Edens, from... Uh, oh, right. The Tri-State. Tri is it Tri-State? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that you're coming up that ramp, and that actually is, believe it or not, that's kind of what we would consider the 100% corner. It's the, the intersection of the two main roads, and there is zero visibility from that 100% corner. Uh, so I think in the case of the town line, pulling that, that, uh, that signage opportunity as far east as we possibly can really helps that consumer that's coming off, picks that up first, and it really is not that much of a detriment from anyone coming from the west, because it's so once you're coming there, you can actually see all three of those, those spaces fairly easily, but it's a major advantage for anyone coming from the east. Gotcha. Uh, likewise, on, 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 uh, on Milwaukee, uh, you know, hitting the center point of the site, again, it helps anyone coming northbound on Milwaukee, and it's really not that much of a deterrent from anyone coming southbound. And I do think, and we haven't really discussed it, but pulling it away from the, uh, from the, the residents uh, to the north there is also probably a little bit better thing. So it's, a, I think, a, a, a good neighbor approach Yeah, as you're well. right. That is, that is a rather significant upslope coming from yes. the river up to Milwaukee Avenue, yeah. Correct. But, but it's still a good point. I'd, I'd like to... We're going to take a look at that SP1 versus SP2 on okay. uh, on 60. I think that, mm, that, it, that it might work. So we'll certainly okay. study that. Are you saying that by 60 and Riverwood at that light, right up after you get off the expressway and you're coming towards Vernon Hills, you're saying at that point you're going to be able to see this sign? No, I think as you're coming up into this intersection. You scared me. <laughs> 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 What's not shown here is the blimp that oh, we were requesting. We're coming off the ramp and coming. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's to me. It seems like there's a right. there's, there's a fairly yeah. big elevation yeah. there. Yeah. 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 This SP2, we touched on that, so I want to touch a little bit on that. I think this is a very creative solution that Michael came up with. So we are, one of the main goals for Hawthorne right here is obviously putting in entertainment in restaurants. We've, I don't know how many times I've mentioned restaurants tonight, but that's going to be a huge, huge uh, distinguishing uh, attribute of, of Hawthorne, this new Hawthorne. So what we came up with here is, uh, in, in most in all major tenants that we talk to, always the first thing they say is, can we get signage off of 60 or 21, right? We always get requests that. Our pylon has our major anchors on it. We can't list every single restaurant, then it just becomes a <coughs> kind of a strip mall uh, signage. So what we thought about here, and I think this is great, is 
another lower monument sign but it has all the dining options so all of the all the restaurants that typically ask for signage here's an opportunity to show that and we're going to have restaurants on the south side we're going to have it on the northeast corner um, so we want to make sure that you know people can get to uh, certain restaurants uh, in the vicinity of these signs right and i think it's a great way just to organize it you, you get a very consistent message we're not trying to put 12, well, we have three here and three on the other one, 12 messages on one sign. To me, it just becomes useless. Useless. You might as well have nothing on there. So really, I think we find that five to six messages is about as much as you want to have on any one of these pylons. Uh, our department store commitments and, and some of our major anchors really work on that major pylon. And then here, this is really the piece that's really new to Hawthorne. Uh, we are putting in a lot of a, lot of, a big, pretty big investment in restaurants. We think that's something that's really going to help change that center, uh, really bring some of that consumer back to, the, to Hawthorne that has been thus far passing it by and going to other options. And we really felt like it was important to celebrate those changes. And this is a really great way to do it cleanly, effectively, and, and really help the consumer and help the tenants really perform. And, and really, that's a very simple goal, but we, we, we feel like it's a very important goal. And, and this is our solution to really achieve that, that end. No, no gap on this one. You know, no gap doesn't. It, it's really very specific to food tenants and food of a significant size. We're not, you know, it's not food court tenants. Uh, you see a representation on there for dining court. We'll kind of give them one location, uh, but ultimately this is really those uh, kind of fast, casual, and real, ni you know, nice white tablecloth sit-down restaurants that we really want to promote on this sign. Uh, one question on that: How are you then going to deal internally with wayfinding? to get people, if I'm going to wings and things and it's on the back side, how am I going to get there with the internal wayfinding signage? It's um, a very good question. Uh, again, it gets back to the how many messages we can fit on one panel. So uh, we've again opted once we sort of give you that reinforcement or encouragement that these tenants effectively are on the property. Uh, we have to. We've now gone back to, and you, and you see some of the, the examples of the uh, the typical site directional signage. We are limiting that really to just the department stores, the theater, and uh, you know any major anchor tenant that we that we have. We we just can't accommodate 12 messages on on that signage and really affect, expect it to be effective. So the strategy here is is the mall driving experience. So you get on the site and you you. Drive them. You can drive the mall until you find it the first time, and then you know where it is. I, I'm not being sarcastic. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm. I'm just speaking openly about what occurs. So, some somebody who's going there for the first time gets the mall driving experience because he's going to make the wrong choice the first time, and right. he's going to go around the long one. Right. And they're going to see a fantastic new theater and some other restaurants <laughs> that they weren't considering, and they're going to say, this is a place i got to come back to after I have my nice meal. So, so he got the okay. mall experience as well as eating at the restaurant. Right. So, so that's basically what it is, because you, it, otherwise you oversign the site. Right, absolutely. That's not the purpose of the signage. You might as well have no signage now. Right. Okay. So, and then also, John, to answer John's question, the interior wayfinding, that's important too. Right. So, obviously, with these new tenants that we're doing, we're going to revamp the interior wayfinding. Um, the cinema is going to require, um, you know, really excellent wayfinding. Um, so, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have that um, also addressed. Following up on that, um, for the entrance, the south, for the southeast entrance, mm -hmm. if I go to that restaurant entertainment option, and I have a great time there, and then I decide, hey, I want to go to the movies. Do I have to go outside and go to the movies, or can I walk through the mall? You can walk through the mall. Okay, so there will be an interconnection there, and, and how, how will you deal with that if, internally? So the interconnection, that on that southeast corner, um, you can get downstairs, go up the escalator, and then through the northeast corner to the movie theater. Mm -hmm. um, we these these operations are going to probably last beyond midnight mm -hmm. um, because they have a bar component. Um, we will have them all open um, so that if you park in one end, you're not going to be you know locked out and have to walk half the mall just to get to your car. So we will have those doors. Part of the heart healthy approach, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> so, so the, you're literally going to leave the mall open uh, with security, yes. But not 24/7. Just until no, that last tenant right, closes. Right, so right, right, the last right, right. the you know the 12 o'clock or 12:30. Right. right. So our, our hours of operation now dramatically changes from what it exists today, 
uh, and that's something that we have to take into account. Um, you know, once we knew that once we get a theater in there, they're going to have those late night showings, and uh, we always account for that. That's not anything new to our centers. Uh, sure. We have a great oper operations team. We study it, um, and we have a good security program. So. And that's something that uh, that's nice I mean that's very good if you're going to one of those restaurants and you want to go to a movie right. you know, the, the scenario that he but, paints but is, is the, a very the clear walk one. home is going to be a tough one right. <laughs> you know you're gonna have to call a cab for the mall experience to get back to your car right so no we that's that's something that we we really take seriously is that we never want a customer to be stranded on the other side of the mall and that's just they'll have some trams <laughs> okay. All right. So. Seasonal trams. Seasonal. Uh, we do have some of these um, site monument signs throughout. Uh, I don't know if they're a whole lot, but um, also in keeping with the uh, the overall aesthetics, we're, we'll be upgrading these. A little bit of blow up of the directionals. So this is the this is uh, John the the element that would become overwhelming should it have another five or six right. messages on there. So we're really trying to kind of hit the hit the highlights and uh, hope the consumer can help find their way once they've had that encouragement. That yes, there is in fact that great steakhouse on on the property at Old Orchard. Or, sorry, Matt Hawthorne. Well, we thought this might improve from what's there today. I believe these are. I'm sorry, what was the question? Is this illuminated? Yes. This one's illuminated. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, the challenge with, with all these signs is to not really try and overdo them. I'm sure we've all seen signage that has lots of graphics on it and crazy fonts and things like that. And what looks good on a page and what actually looks good in practice are quite often two different things. We are going out of our way to be very simple, very clear, very clean, very timeless. Uh, using the you know, the, the actual um, icon of the, the of the different routes is very helpful. Much easier than having to read it. You can almost even just glance at it and just you, you subconsciously absorb what the messages are. Uh, very mindful of that. We've learned the hard way on some of those things. And we've done them right, uh, and we're, you know we're hoping to do them right from this way forward. And I think this is a, an example of, of really just that clean, simple, very timeless font. Very uh, you know nice cap height, not obnoxious, but certainly something you don't have to squint to read either. And then really limiting the messages is the other part of that that really makes those signage uh, that signage very effective. I think that's a really good point. When you look at Great America, you blow by Great America at 65 miles an hour, you can't read their sign. And they probably spent millions on it, and you can't read it. So I think simple and clear with icons is really a great idea. We are, we are rolling something uh, very similar to this at Old Orchard uh, in the next several months. Um, every site directional will be swapped out uh, in a similar fashion. So. Okay, the, the actual pylon signs, are they, how much stale is this the staff? How much higher are they than anything that exists in town now? Um, well, the tallest sign we have is River Tree, which is 25 feet tall. Uh, these are 48 feet tall. Well, there's nothing, you know, my positive is there's nothing rotating on them. <laughs> yeah, there's no strobe light on it as well. Yeah, no strobe um, light, no rotation. Or a car impaled on top uh, of it or something. Haw Hawthorne Square what, What's going on with our sign, you know, over in uh, River Tree? Did, that, did we approve that for, wasn't that Gord going to be kind of? Gordman's. Oh, Gordman's. Gordman's. Oh, oh, the directional sign for Gordman's? Or the multi-tenant signs. Well, the one on, on the site that would get you kind of back there wasn't the directional signs. They, those were installed. Okay. Yeah. On the old marquee. Okay. It's on three sides now. Okay. S signage is a science, and so 48 feet. Where did that 48 feet come from? Well, we looked at uh, a couple, and I, I think I have some photo rendering. We actually go through a lot of sightline studies on these things. Absolutely. Uh, it's not a 
how big can we get it? And you know, we, we've been through this before. And like, well, would you take 40? Would you take 32? It's not a number that we just sort of go big and hope to negotiate. It's really what does this sign need to be functional? And we look at it from sight lines where the consumer will actually be viewing this sign and what, what is needed to really get the job done. And, and we arrive at a dimension. But it's, I'm not going to say it's scientific, but it's not just sticking your thumb in the air and you know, checking to see what things work. There, there is uh, a, a bit of intelligence and a bit of effort that goes into really determining those heights based on surrounding areas, potential blockages, sight lines, et cetera, terrain. And I know, I know 48 feet sounds when you compare it to something that, you know, your tallest being a 25, um, but I think in, in uh, you gotta take it in context, and when you're dealing with a 70, 80 acre uh, shopping center, it, it actually, it's not as, as bad as you th might think. Uh, if you look at some of the photo, <coughs> these photo uh, renderings that we'll pass around, uh, it, is, it is to scale, um, and it, it actually seems fitting, and we, 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 we actually went through this at Old Orchard as well, um, you know, a, a similar size, uh, mall, and um, of course, once you and it's built now, um, and when you look at it, it's actually very appropriate to the size of the of the center. And in something like Hawthorne here, especially along this, you know, you're talking about 700 feet um, from uh, 60 to the southeast corner, and another 400 feet if you're looking from uh, the southwest corner. Uh, the, the movie theater area is, you know, a thousand feet from from any major thoroughfare. So. Uh, it is set back deeper, and I think this expansive space, this, when you talk about 48 feet, it really just blends in almost. Well, this is remarkably challenged because of those properties on the corner. Right. I mean, that, that right there is, is what your, your challenge is. Right. And Again, there's a great change there, too. That, that's a high point going down towards the mall. That's why that one sign along that, that uh, the Route 60, that first sign is a, it's a very perplexing important. question. Because you're not really seeing that first sign from these photos. Very much of it. You see maybe the little bit of the Westfield component. Well, yeah, and I think, I think that's the initial, at least your eye catches it and says, oh, okay, I think that's You've a sign. Arrived. Right, as you arrive and you're getting closer and it's your first site you may not you know we don't expect you to see it and honestly that's, mile down, that's part of the reason for the cap height that, that the west field at the top and the taller cap height is meant to have a further away read and as you get closer you're actually you, the the signage for the actual tenants is actually lower smaller cap height meant to be read at a closer distance at a lower speed uh, and it's actually there is again a bit of science that goes into this you, you wouldn't necessarily just you know flip those things around there is really a way that you read this thing and you actually read them from the top down top further away bottom part as you're closer in, and you'll see that the cap heights and the messages reflect that, that approach. Well, but could you count, I guess the troubling thing that I have with regards to this is that unlike a new development, or in the case of Old Orchard where you had obstructions between you and the highway that really caused you to need the verticality of this, of this sign, the mall has been here since 1974, 1975. So it's got a fairly long track record of being at this current location. And with that, coupled with technology, as you were saying, with regards to restaurants and you know the movie theaters, I go on my, I got an app that says, here's what the movie, I guess I'm, I'm struggling with that same argument of, I need a 48 foot sign when I can go on my handheld device and it says, here's Westfield, or here's Macy's at Westfield, or here is the, the soon-to-be theater at, at Westfield. So it, it's, I, I, that's troubling to me. And I, and I guess it's, it's hard for me to, to go along with that argument that I need a 48-foot sign on the east side of Milwaukee on Route 60 because I don't know where the mall is. One of the, one of the things we were talking, um, I think I mentioned in the last concept meeting, but our goal through this, um, you know, Hawthorne, Hawthorne needs a revamping. And, we know that. And <laughs> you've been work, working on this for nine years. Right. And the, and the, at least you've been around for a while. Right. <laughs> so far. Yeah, we were here for the 2004 drawings that never. <laughs> <laughs> we were here for lifestyle. <laughs> lifestyle, yeah. That's coming gone now, I think. Um, but I think what, one of the things that we're really focused on is really expanding that, that, yeah. that market area. Okay. Our, our trade area has, has gone down, has, has shrunk. 
we, we need to expand that trade area back up again and even further. And I think our focus here, it wasn't just let's throw in a theater because it looks nice. Uh, we, we looked at it, what are we missing here? We're missing an entertainment component. What, what goes with entertainment is restaurants. Okay, now you're adding something that's totally different. You're adding, you're, you're setting now a standard of retail here. Okay, that's going to allow us to, that's going to increase foot traffic. That foot traffic is now, we're going to go out to the retailers that we lost before, yeah. that have gone on to the other uh, sites, and say, look, we're, we're coming back. There is a reason now to go back to Hawthorne. And people, that I think is going to start this chain reaction. And for us, that is our strategy. This is our road to recovery. This is the first step. And just, I don't want to veer too much away from that, the whole subject of the PTA. We, we have the primary trade area is critical for us. We have to expand that. And what I say is not, not only do we get the customer we get now coming back more and staying longer, but we need the new customer. We have to get that customer, the new customer back. And that's the only way we're going to generate more traffic. Uh, when I say traffic, foot traffic and, and, and people to the mall. So um, these wayfinding signs to us um, at these critical junctures is very, very important for us. Uh, it, 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 it's a beacon, um, you know, part of the LED. Uh, it, it speaks out to you. There's some action going on. It draws you. Um, so. I think those two two locations um, is going to be critical for us to to drive that, and um, that's 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 our reason. The, the truth of the matter is, most of the signage you, we've just been talking about is not for the consumer that shops at Hawthorne today. I mean, they know where they're going, they know where they like to park, they know the entry they like to go in at, they know where their shops are. We, we need to grow what the PTA in, in for Hawthorne. We need to bring the consumer who hasn't shopped there in a long time but used to love it and has since moved on, as Hide mentioned, we need to open this thing up to a whole bunch of people who have never set foot in Hawthorne. That's what these things do. They give them a beacon from, as they're as they're getting, pro, getting close, they let them know they've arrived. Once they get on site, we let them know where to go. We make this experience easy, and we get them to come back often and, you know, and, and spend and enjoy and, and really kind of, uh, we really bring Hawthorne into their, uh, into their lives, and that's what this does. Okay. It's not for the consumer that shops there today. Village Attorney Kenny. At the appropriate time, I'd like to make some comments about signage. It doesn't have to be now, but there's some legal Before implications. Before we leave here tonight? Yes. And are you going to make the disclaimer statement? No, this is about science. The issue, there's a couple issues inherent with the proposal I just want everybody to be aware of. And I can do it now or I can do it later, but we're talking science and I don't want to miss the opportunity. No, okay, you can talk later. Thank you. Uh, I, Cindy. The okay. comment that you made too about the fact that we lost some really good stores. And I hope that those come back based on what we're proposing here because I think part of it is that our consumers, even our local consumers, me being one who goes there, I, I'd like to see some of those old stores come back just to appeal to me because right now it appeals to some of those younger kids, but we've got other people that would love to see the Creighton Barrels, the Talbots, the, the other stores come back. And that's what I'm hoping for, and I hope that you're sincere and that I love your entries. I think they're going to brighten up the mall because it is very dark in the evening. I think some of that backlighting is going to be inviting to people. Mm -hmm. um, and I really hope that we're sincere and that we're going to really push hard to make sure that those empty storefronts get filled and that Hawthorne becomes a nice destination once again for those people who left to go to Deer Park or to Woodfield or wherever. You know, so I, I hope that you're, you know, you're sincere in that you're going to make that marketing effort to bring those things back. Absolutely. Because we do. the theater is great, but we've got to bring the other stuff in yes. as well. And we do, we do customer surveys all the time. Uh, we have a running list of what tenants, the, the most requested tenants. So we make every effort to go after those tenants. Um, but until now, it's been very difficult to give them a reason to come. Um, and I think with this, uh, we're certainly, you know, being in the media already, uh, certainly seeing some interest. Um, so well, that's, that's one of my main points. While I agree with Mr. Kelmer on about the signage, at the same time in looking at the, the overall package, I think the best way I can describe it is it brings a late 20th century mall into the 21st century. Um, that's the thing I like the most about it, mm -hmm. and and hopefully that'll because I agree with what Trustee Hebda said, and, and and hopefully by giving it that kind of an image, that's you know that's what it'll that's what it'll do is bring some of that. 
Okay. What, okay, I mean, what would another anchor department store potentially do to your revenue per square foot at this center? Putting in another anchor here? Yeah. That's a good question. I don't, it'd certainly have to be a different offering. Physically, I don't know. I think we'd have to, assuming parking was an issue, we'd have to maybe demall a portion just to squeeze one physically in there. I think, so that's a difficult task. I'm not sure physically we can add another anchor, but certainly. Yeah, but I mean, with the addition of the theater and the restaurants and, you know, hopefully the, you know, the upgrading of, you know, some of the retailers, but how much does just the theater and the restaurants drive up the revenue per square foot? We're looking at that right now. We don't know exact numbers, but our intent here is this, this is a renovation that's impacting all four corners. I would expect all the anchors, all four anchors here to benefit from this, you know, from foot traffic, from just, I mean, they have good offerings here. I think we have good, solid department stores. So I would think that they would benefit tremendously from our investment. And the benefit comes not just from the theaters and the restaurants that we're adding, but that consumer who's coming for a bite to eat or to go see a show comes a little earlier, stays a little late and stops and picks up a gift, runs to the gap to pick up something, exchange something, and runs to other retailers that are there and actually shops and comes, because they're coming here instead of going somewhere else, it's that convenience that we really play up. And that's what the shopping mall is all about, is really getting multiple uses under one roof and adding in convenience. So if you're coming to eat, you're coming to see a show, you can actually pick up a gift for someone, pick up a new fashion item. And really we expect the theaters and the restaurants to improve the sales per square foot, not just in what they contribute, but in what they help contribute to the retailers that are there existing. So everyone benefits, everyone rides the wave of this added foot traffic and this increased kind of presence and improved feel that Hawthorne has to offer. And, okay, the entrance between Sears and Carson's that's going to be improved, is there still going to be, you know, a people mover escalator type to take you up to the other level that's required? Yes, we're not moving that escalator. Wait, wait, wait. Will it be, well, will a new escalator be in besides the one that's internalized now? There will be one within the, so at the lower level, as you come in that entry, this restaurant will have a little entry in there inside about 1,000 square feet. And within that, you'll have a little welcoming desk, and then there'll be a stair and an escalator going up with the elevator. And I think it's escalator. In that wing of the mall. Correct. It's within their demise premise. It's not in the common mall. It will be within their tenant lease space. Right. It's going into, yeah, so they have both a lower level presence and upper level. And lower level is just 1,000 square feet. It's just really just an entry portal. So you come in, and then you shoot up, and then that's that 30,000, 39,000 square feet above. Yeah, is that the actual square footage being added to the building between Penny's and Sears on the upper level? How many square feet of new space is actually being added? It's actually no new space. It's all existing tenant space. We're consolidating. You're back to Penny's and Sears. Oh, Penny's and Sears. So, oh, yeah. I went upstairs. The escalator took me upstairs. That's right. So it's about 40,000 square feet on the on the theater, and then another 19,000 lower down below. All right, so about 60, what, 45? Is it 45? I think it's about 45 and about 19. So we're right around the mid mid 60s, 65,000 square feet of GLA. Okay. And the actual height, uh, what's what's the, the the highest point of the uh, added space, the, the theater? you know, building and there, other, there, other uses. Is that the, the, 50 the, feet high or is it as high as the existing roof line or is it? 
the the uh, restaurants are as high as existing roof line. Uh, we, we actually want to maintain uh, a, a, a level floor in there, so actually there are the tenant, the what we're calling the R2 tenant, could actually have both an interior entrance and an exterior entrance. So we really want to maintain uh, the finished floor level at the same that it, it currently exists in the shopping center. From a leasing standpoint, one of the ch worst things we can do and sometimes what makes it easier for us in design and construction is to actually put what we call a, a, a step in there and lower the slab. The, the issue you have, um, I'm kind of getting off base, where Hede is showing is the, the little hand right now, there is a pretty significant slope from the m current mall entry out to the ring road to the north. It slopes down there, I'm gonna say 10 or 12 feet. Uh, so there's a pretty significant slope. <coughs> What would make it a lot easier for us is to, at some point where we think we're going to have a separation from R1 to R2, to actually step the slab and go down a little bit. That would be easy from a construction standpoint. What that does is it locks our leasing folks into, here it is, now you've got a 6,412 square foot space, and if you need 6,487, someone's going to have to put a step into their, into their space. It doesn't really work out very well. So really what makes a lot of sense from us from a, a longevity standpoint is to really maintain that pretty level. What you then see is on this the northernmost corner, we actually end up with a little bit of a step in there. We've got about a two foot separation between grade that will be sidewalk at the parking field and what we'll call that kind of terrace seating area for the restaurants. Personally, I think that's actually quite nice because now when you're sitting, you're actually elevated up a little bit. People are walking by you, you're raised a little bit. Car lights are coming in a little bit lower. They're not blasting you when you're sitting out there having a nice glass of wine uh, with your spouse or your significant other. It actually makes a much nicer dining experience. So we've actually, actually used the existing terrain to our advantage. What it does do, however, is push the whole building up a little bit at that northernmost corner. So at the worst case condition, we've got about 20 feet of restaurant space, and we've got another roughly 40 feet up to the parapet for the theater, so we're about 60 feet off so of So what's the height of pennies, the, the, you know, even with the facade or, the, or the, you know, the highest point on pennies? If they had a that I don't know. It will, we will be, I, I suspect we'll be, the, Penny's, point, is, yeah. Penny's is not 60 feet to that peak, I wouldn't think. Uh, I suspect we'll be higher than that, but I, but, but is you know. The, is, the, is Penny's taller than the Sears? Yes, Penny's is taller than Sears. Right. Sears is a, right. a relative pancake in, in the grand scheme right. of things. I mean, Penny's has actually put some architecture at their entries and done some elevation to, you know, is kind of Sears break up the box. Can't they could do something about the Manser type roof line? You did? No, no. <laughs> we have not contacted them. You, you think it's falling on deaf ears? Or? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Well, uh, okay, interesting. So, yeah, so that'll stick. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll be obviously a prominent feature. And, and I think that's a good thing. You know, the Sears is not really the, the best front door to the shopping center. They've got great real estate. They're not doing what I think we would all like them to do with it. Uh, so really, we're, I think yeah. the, the, the addition here we're putting on the backside, the expansion, will really kind of give a new, yeah. a new face to the shopping center. Right. We, you and know, then certainly, this, these entries um, will go a long way. You know, we're obviously touching some of the landscaping out here. So... Um, I think we can, this north, this northeast corner will get revamped uh, quite nicely. Um, the height, I, I'm, I'm trying to think about that too. I think the theater is going to be a little bit higher, but JCPenney maybe just comes to that midpoint. Yeah, but I mean, it, it'll lower. be obviously significantly higher than Sears, which is okay, you know. Right. Yeah, okay. Just to kind of clarify what you're talking about, because I'm not sure everybody knows that, that the four anchors own their own part of the building. Right. That's you correct. have no control of them. Uh, that's correct. That's yes. correct. Yes, correct. Thank you for that. Yeah. That's why yeah, I I mean when you when you look at the mall you think of the mall right. and it's all part of the mall, but in reality those four anchors are totally separate in terms the of the area that we're impacting on this northeast corner is all we can impact. Now we can yeah. work with pennies and try and get them to do things and work with Sears, but in the end what we really can control is or what we can really impact is yeah. what we're actually yeah. doing in, here. In. What section of the parking lot do you guys own, if any? Well, let's go back to this site plan here. So we own this sliver in here. Okay. And then we own this sliver in here. Okay. And then this sliver here. Okay. And then this tiny piece out here. It's effectively a cross. The Westfield owns the, you know, the and the anchors all own their properties out to their commensurate streets so or the, ring roads. The chances of, has this been contemplated doing any, you know, 
uh, lot parking islands landscaping lighting changes in the parking lots i think well that you control yeah we we just went through um, a lot of street lamp uh, all the lights have been changed out here yeah. all the all the lighting has been changed out so that's been new uh, and we constantly upgrade wherever you know we do paving, selected paving areas where it need to be done, and so it's part of the maintenance program. So it is. You're not. So you're not going to reconfigure any of the roads. No, not not really. Only the the only part that we're reconfiguring would be right by the the new theater. Right. So there will be a new aisle there. We'll have to reconfigure what's some of those aisles. What, what style light did you put in? Is it a box? Uh, I have to get back to you. I don't know exact. Maybe John might know. What kind of light was it? It wasn't anything of a decorative nature. No, no, no. It was no, it's a, it's a three-headed light pole that actually oh, is shorter right. than what was originally out there. Yeah, okay. And they've been on going for right. about 12 months in the replacement. Okay. But any thoughts in your lots you control to actually improving the landscaping and, you know, any kind of potential islands? I believe that was part of our landscape package here, but maybe not all throughout the islands. Uh, definitely the entryways. Do we have that or no? Uh, you do not have that in your packet. We have had discussions with them with regards to that. They've been doing improvements, yeah, maintenance, uh, ongoing for the last year and a half in terms of <clears throat> buffing up the existing islands. Right. They got the rock out of there, for instance, that was killing the trees off. For in but we've talked about going through the, the site yeah. and looking at some of the malformed trees and uh, well, things. Well, how about just pedestrian walkways to take people out of harm's way walking, back, <laughs> walking from their car to their car? You know, as far as, I mean, there's, not everybody's got a camera beeper, the car stops automatically. Yeah. There's, a, there's a little bit of that that took place when, when J.C. Penney was done, but there's, there's nothing in the current plans that show that just simply because if you add additional space like that, it requires, it, it's a ripple effect across the entire lot. Right. Um, and, and you could create one area, but you've got 50 other areas that wouldn't have something like that. So it's, it's tough to do. Okay. I mean, we are do, talk, talking to renovation here. You know, I've, I mean, we've been waiting nine years to ask these questions for guys. Like, <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. You want to? Are you going to keep going here? Or is it? No, I think we're we're done on our end. All right. Okay. Sign time. Sign. <laughs> okay. I think the the legal issue that the village has to address is the concept in the SP1 signs of having what I'm going to call off-premise advertising potential on those signs. Right now, the village doesn't allow off-premise advertising. What happens is it implicates the First Amendment. If you allow off-premise advertising, you cannot regulate the message that goes on it. If you uh, So assume for a moment that the village was willing to consider off-premise advertising. We'll have to amend our codes and decide how we want to do it. Will we only allow off-premise advertising in the commercial corridor? Uh, we can regulate the time, the place, and the manner of uh, of outdoor advertising. So that'll that if 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 the direction is to allow these types of signs without off-premise advertising, staff will have to come back with a proposal that impacts the whole village. Not good, not bad. It's just something that we have to think about. The other issue is both. Um, Milwaukee and Townline are state routes, so uh, the Illinois Highway Advertising Control Act regulates, and to the extent, Hal, don't look at me that way. No, <laughs> Hal and I don't know too much about this, but to the extent that um, there's uh, outdoor advertising signs, they'll need to get state permits for that. Um, and, and then the state has regulations, which are probably allow signs that are larger than they're talking about. Um, however, when we get to the concept of moving signs, I'm not so sure that the Highway Advertising Control Act is going to allow that. Uh, my understanding is that they allow what I'm going to call static messages. It's an LED sign. It flashes a sign, holds it for 10 seconds, and then it puts on another message. Holds it for 10 seconds and 
puts on another message. So you can see those, the newer LED signs along the highway, so you kind of get a sense of that. And um, the state of Illinois along state routes only allow those messages 10 seconds. Now I've talked with their attorney and we, we'll talk more about that. But I don't know that, that the state's gonna allow the moving message, but if they do, then that's something for you to consider. So allowing the off-premise advertising part of this it has larger implications that we'll have to consider. And, and if, if for, I could just, you know, I'd like some info on this. The outdoor signs you see along the tollway, those are just regulated by those individual towns or whoever's private property those are on? Well, you've got sign companies that will go out and lease property. And the, the State Act has a lot of rules and regulations that pretty severely restrict the possible locations for signs. So once these sign companies find a location, they treat it like gold. So they'll, they'll sure. get the location, they'll lease the land, and then they will go market to the advertisers. Right. Um, you know, there's two, si two sizes along the expressway. 20 by 60 is 1,200 square feet, and there's a, a smaller one, 14 by 48, uh, 672 square feet, and the 14 by 48 is more in lines what they're talking about. However, when you look at the SP1 signs they're talking about, instead of being vertical where the outdoor billboards put a lot of words in it, this is, um, I mean horizontal, this one's vertical. So it's not gonna be as cluttered as a typical billboard because they don't have the horizontal surface for, for words. And if it's gonna be pictures, it'll be a lot different than a billboard. And, and, and this particular sign really has three separate messages. Westfield at the top might be something you're looking at in the distance. The, the, the photograph, assuming it's gonna be, you know, picture, that might be just something you take in because there's not words and only when you get closer you're gonna see the words of the stores. So it's, it's not gonna have, in my opinion anyway, that imposing, you know, if you're visualizing yeah. a billboard and you're saying, oh, that's too big. Right. It's not gonna have that imposing feature because it's really divided into three messages. Would it, you know, I don't, was, was anyone from staff here when we did address the outdoor sign issue at Butterfield and 60? At the billboard? Yeah. Billboard and that they were putting up in the middle of the night and they got the, they got the right of way yeah. permit from the railroad and we kind of said, well, you can't cross our land here. That kind of and uh, that kind of quelled it, but I mean, and Kayat had a 14 by 48 in the parking lot on Milwaukee when Half Day Inn was there. Yeah. That yeah. came down. Uh, so and that gives you, uh, yeah, you know, if you remember that. And usually yeah. the height though, too. Yeah, on that's the right. That's right. That's right. Is uh, 60, I think 62 or 63 feet, correct? And that's the norm on a billboard's height. Well, the difference, it, yeah, it, it, it's totally different heights depending on where on the highway you find yourself. But this, the reason why I say this isn't going to necessarily be as imposing is because their 48 feet are st starting measurement at ground level, not up on a yep. pole and going higher. Yeah, okay. Right. Anything else, Ben? That's it. Uh, the, the only message this is a concept presentation. Nothing is binding on either the plan commission comments or uh, the village board. Uh, it's clearly to give you, give the village an opportunity to get a kind of a glimpse of what you're doing. Uh, hopefully you get feed, for you to get feedback on some of the issues and I thought that worked out really well tonight. But yes. anything can happen in terms of the final decision. We understand. And, it, and is the ownership uh, changed, you know, with, from, you know, is the ownership of AMC been taken over by the new, you know, the new purchasers, the people from across the Pacific Ocean that bought it. I'm not sure if that's that transaction has happened yet or not. Okay, is is there any doubt in your mind that there, that could be applied in the ointment potentially? Nothing, nothing that we know at this point no. has occurred. Has it been an issue? So you, I guess what I'm saying is if we, you know, I'm sure we're going to work our way through, you know, the approval process here, but I mean, yeah, I just, I'm just curious because of it happening once before when, you know, Carasotis and 
AMC, and we thought the project potentially was going to start probably four years ago. So, um, if we hear anything, we'll keep you updated. We haven't heard. It, you don't feel like talking that loud about this, huh? <laughs> Seems to be. We haven't really announced who our operator is All yet, right. so. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, any other questions from uh, P and Z or? To, to follow up on Bob's question, what do you intend to do with the signs? Are you looking for off-premises advertising? Uh, for the signs? Yeah, are you looking for off-premises? Correct. So you want off-premises? Yes, please. Does that include the signs that are on the building? Uh, correct. So you want off-premises on the signs in the building as well as the pylons? Yes. Okay. All the statics and the two LEDs? That's correct. Okay. All right, well, wh where are we at from, a, I guess, a, a scheduling standpoint? And, mm -hmm. you know, where's, what's their next move? Well, we're, we've already issued them a first round of technical review comments. We're waiting for them to come back. Sure. I think part of this meeting was to help as a part of that. Um, so they're going to go back, obviously, and work on a number of things. There's kind of a parallel process going right now. Technical review, um, which is some of the stuff we talked about tonight, and then there's the engineering part of this review. And as indicated in my report, um, they have to do uh, several major um, relocations of underground utilities that um, if they came in tomorrow and had engineering approvals, not only from, from us, but from Lake County, we would say, okay, here's your building permit, post your bond, go. Um, they don't need uh, the board or commission's approval to do that. So sure. we're kind of moving along parallel to that. When they do that or when they start that, obviously I think there's some, um, there's another parallel path that talks about the economic incentive part of this. So Is that a um, parallel path? I, it's sort of. Okay. It's kind of like a flyover, I think. Uh, um, so, um, and we still have to go through that yet. So um, we don't have a tentative schedule set up for them to appear before the, the commission at some point. Um, we still need to work out the working parts of what the entitlement process is going to look like. And Bob, between Bob and myself and Rob and Hide, um, we're kind of circling around what we think we need to do. Um, but unfortunately, um, back when NCT did the PUD for this, it, we, it got kind of squishy on how the approvals were applied to the malls. So we're kind of talking about how to clean that all up into one nice package so that we can go forward. So, Okay. And, and the actual acreage here is the, the whole mall site 70 is that what it is somewhere around there i can't how much 90 yeah 90 okay yeah you said 70 oh. threw me off there yeah. 98 okay <laughs> which is all pretty buildable oh yeah now in, in okay all right i don't have any more questions or i do but i'm not i can call them or something <laughs> all right so did we Bolt. How do we do? We set. It, we open up the board meeting. So what do we need? A um, you'll, each board will need a, uh, a motion to adjourn and, and a separate okay. vote to adjourn. You can go first. We can go first. So we we have a standing motion. We need a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, we're adjourned. Okay. And motion adjourned. Second. Thank you very much. A second. Roll call. Trustee Schultz. Trustee Ford. Aye. Trustee Williams. Trustee Hebda. Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Good night. And Thank you very much. Let's Thank you very keep much. communicating, huh? Absolutely. Keep this ball rolling.